Hi, I'm here for Sound on Sound at the Winter Nam Show in Anaheim, California with Chris from Rupert Neve Designs. He's going to show us a new inductory queue in the 500 series format from, uh, from Mr. Rupert Neve. Yeah, indeed. Uh, it's called the 551. Um, we released it on Monday of this week to kind of get ahead of the whole NAM madness and uh, it's working out well. There's got a really positive response to it thus far. Um, this is the first inductor EQ that Rupert has designed in 30 plus years at this point. So this is a very different thing than anything we've ever done. I mean, a lot of the new Rupert Neve, a lot of the new Rupert Neve designs gear is very clear, it's very clean and you know pristine, like the white face plates. It's what people are looking for for that kind of stuff. Um, but they miss the color, they miss the, the texture, the kind of vibe and personality. So in October, when we put out the Shelford series, which are the other blue faceplate stuff that we've got, the Royal Air Force Blue Gray, um, we had an inductor EQ in those, which is the low band from a 1064, the mid band from a 1073, the high band from a 1073, plus some uh, capacitor-based circuitry for some, like an extra 16K air band that was included in that. We took that EQ and we put it in this. So this is that EQ. It, it's not a Shelford module because it's not high voltage, like the other stuff is at 24 volts, plus minus 24, but it's it's inspired by that vintage stuff. It's the best of EQ. It's Rupert's favorite low band, favorite mid band, the new high band. It's, it's we're very proud of it. And it sounds like a very old equalizer. It sounds like an old Neve, which is what a lot of people want. So um, do you want to talk us through the different bands then, what we've got? Sure. Um, You've not got sweepable on the high frequency, have you? You've got a switch? What's, yeah, what's the, that all about? the switch is 8K or 16K. Um, so it's just a, a basic shelf going on up top. Um, it's either shelf or peak. If you press, you get peak. Likewise with the low band, it's shelf or peak, which is a little different than the older EQs, which were just set. With this one, you've got a little bit more variation. Um, the mid band is based on the 1073 inductor, although the frequency choices are a little bit different. They kind of went through and thought about how it would interact with the upper and the lower bands. Um, and uh, these are what they settled on. Likewise with the low band, not quite exactly 1064, but also not supposed to be exactly 1064. It's a new thing, but it's kind of capturing the essence of what that one was when it came out. Um, plus minus 15 dB, a boost or cut at any of the three choices. Um, you've got a fixed high pass filter at 80 hertz on the bottom, which can be combined with the low boost or cut to kind of give you some fun curves on the bottom. Sure. Um, other than that, EQ bypass, it's really simple. It's a three band equalizer. <laughs> it's, it's not supposed to do anything more than that, but sure. it's our first EQ for the 500 series. And more importantly, it's the first and only EQ for 500 series that Rupert actually designed. That's great. Rupert's never done a 500 series EQ, no matter what anyone else would have you believe, he's never actually done it before. Because it is different to design for 500 series than it is for another. So have there been any challenges getting it into the 500 series as opposed to the, the Shelford High Voltage series? It's only the same challenges that we encounter with every other piece of gear that goes to the 500 series. Like Rupert's main thing, when he, when, whenever we port over any module to 500 series, so moving the 5017, that guy, the, the portable Mic Free DI, Porting that down to the 517, um, the challenge is greater with the mic pre than it is with an EQ. Um, but it's the challenge nonetheless to get it to not just fit circuitry wise and operate on that voltage, but to get it to sound the same as something that runs on a higher voltage is a really tricky thing, and you've got to do a lot of toying and playing with it to kind of finesse it into existence. And um, they feel like they've done that with this, which they're very happy about. So. Cool. And people well, will like it because it's blue, you know? Well, everyone loves blue, <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. Um, so how much is it going to cost and when's it going to be shipping? Uh, list price is $9.50 US dollars. So uh, US street price is going to be about eight fifty. dollars um, It is shipping next week. They're, Great. They're, they're out there. They well, exist. We, we look forward to trying one. <laughs> All right, Great. cool. Thanks we so much, Chris. We look forward to sending them to you. <laughs>